With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you to the Bet MGM studio. On this edition of Titans All Access, we take a trip down memory lane with the Foolish Club and Kyle Vandenbosch. Coach Dave McGinnis takes us beneath the surface with defensive big man Tavondre Sweat. The Nissan Insider features safety Amani Hooker. And of course, Brian Callahan is part of every episode of Titans All Access. It's Cali's Corner, presented by Seatgeek. You mentioned that you need more explosive plays, more big plays. Two longest plays yesterday were 23 yards. Those were your only two over 20. Was was that at least in part a result of the fact that the Colts were playing a type of defense that was going to take away many opportunities for big plays? That's Gus Bradley's M.O. He's always been really good at that. It forces you into, into playing a very patient style of football. Um and that's what we that's what we saw. I mean, and they did, and, and I'll give a lot of credit to Gus. I think he's a fantastic coordinator schematically. Uh, really does a nice job of of keeping you a little bit off balance. He's, he's he does a really good job. We have to find ways to to be more explosive, and that's that goes. There's a lot of different ways that that we can probe that. But at the end of the day, if you have seven to eight explosives, that's probably going to mean you're winning the football game. Probably. Will Levis got the ball out very quickly on Sunday, which was your design because you did not want him to take hits. Levis was not sacked in the game. Were you more satisfied overall with your protection? Yeah, I think we are making weekly improvements up front, and that's all five of those guys. Um, I think J.C. Latham, I think every week he goes out there, gets better. Um, it's never perfect. It's never going to be. Um, I think – Peter's done a nice – Peter's grown every week. I think Lloyd's been very solid for us. And I think Dylan's really come on a bit. I think he's improving. So we're after that week-to-week improvement up front. And that's – it takes time to get good up front. It takes time to, to learn a new system and new language and new ways of doing things. And, and I think those guys have done a nice job. They put the time and, and work in, and um, the improvements has been noticeable. I mean, that's two, two back-to-back games where I thought we've been really physical and run the ball well, and, and we've been – better in pass pro. Tony Pollard is someone else who has looked very pretty recently. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like we need to talk about it because he has been the most consistent weapon on this offense. At what point do you expect opposing defenses to start specifically planning to stop Tony Pollard? People are trying are aware now that we can that we're a pretty solid rushing football team and they're trying to find ways to, to slow that down. Um, but Tony is so dynamic and so versatile that you don't, you know, we throw the ball with him in the game. He pass protects great. He never really has to ever come out. And and so there, it's hard for people to pin down necessarily just because he's in if, if we're going to run the football or not run the football or what's he, is he going to release in a pattern, what all those things. So that part helps him. Um, but he has been just an absolutely fantastic playmaker for our offense. He's been a great leader. Uh, he's been a great uh, locker room presence. And then on top of that, he's made – and especially yesterday, most of our plays, um, it was fantastic. Jarvis Brownlee um, at corner. What a room. game. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. From just our perspective, looked like he played really well. When you watch the tape, maybe even more impressive? Yeah, he was fantastic uh, for, for a young player. He's always been a guy that we felt like had the potential uh, to be a good player. And now that he's getting an opportunity due to injury, he's really uh, shown what he's capable of. And then – the key for him now is going to be do it again. You know, that that's what separates guys in the league is really, really nice – building into a really nice performance, had a really, really nice performance against the Colts, and now can you do that multiple weeks in a, in a row? Buffalo Bills next. You've seen Buffalo a lot from your time in Cincinnati. What about this 2024 Bills team is different or the same from what you have experienced? They're running the ball well. They're a physical football team. Um you know, they, they, they're playing a really aggressive brand of defense, which they sort of always have. But um, they've had a little bit of change in the staff there as well from last year to this year with Eric Washington leaving to go to the, the Bears. And I think, um, you know, Coach McDermott's probably taken a more active hands-on approach to it. But, you know, they got good players. they got good scheme. They're, they're a, a team that is battle-tested. They know what it looks and feels like, and, and they are a contending AFC team. Um, so we got a work cut out for us in what is maybe one of the best environments in football to go play. Hard, difficult, but really enjoyable to go play in an environment like Buffalo. So, um, yeah, we got we got our hands full against a, against a team that I think is uh, playing 
pretty, pretty good football and is one of the better teams in our conference. For more of our conversation with Brian Callahan, we invite you to enjoy the OTP. You can watch the OTP on the Titans YouTube channel or at TennesseeTitans.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the OTP wherever you get your podcasts. There is only one official Titans podcast, better known as the OTP. Stay tuned. More Titans All Access right after this. Second down and 10. Play fake. Flacco fires over the middle. Intercepted. Hooker, 50. Hooker, 40. Hooker, 30. Hooker run out of bounds by Sermon inside the 30. Yes. Titans' first interception of the year. Amani Hooker picking her off. Sixth year man from Iowa makes the big play. That was Amani Hooker's eighth career interception. It seems like the 26-year-old from Minneapolis just continues to make more and more big plays every season. Hooker is also taking more of a leadership role in his sixth NFL season. In this week's Nissan Insider, Amani Hooker tells Amy Wells that everything in his life seems to be ever-evolving. So Amani, you had a lot of change. So now coming into this season, have you done anything differently knowing that you are going to be one of the main leaders, not just in your room, but within the defense and within this team as a whole? You know, for me, that I had to be pushed into a leadership role more than I already was in. So all these things that were challenges last year, I mean, guys learned from it, I learned from, from it, helped us out as a better player, but also just as a better person as far as handling adversity. Can I, you know, help the guy next to me, help these rookies come in? And, you know, it's a new scheme for me as well, but I have to show, you know, I can, you can do this at a high level and still, you know, lead it, whether it's by example or verbally. How do you navigate something like that? Because you're not like the old guy who's right. five or six years older. You're yeah. the old guy who's, their age. For me, it's just not based off age, it's based off experience. Um, I've played the game at a high level in the NFL since I was you know, 20 years old, and now I'm about to be 26. So for me, it was just about, you know, just how can I make this game easier? And the faster I learn the game, the faster I'm able to not just help myself, but like I said before, help others around me. You've mentioned that this scheme is new to you too. How big of an adjustment has this been? New coaching staff, new system, kind of trying to get your feet under you. I mean, I love it. I love the change. I love when I'm hearing new key coaching points that I haven't heard from before from you know different perspective players. Um, both my coaches and the DC Denar, they all play safety. So now I'm hearing different techniques, different things that I might not have heard before that I'm hearing now. Tell me a little bit about Denard. What do you like about his style? What do you like about what he's bringing to this defense? Um, I love his energy. Uh, I love the intensity that he has. Um, you know, he, he's a player, so he knows the position that I am specifically playing. So he might have a little, you know, tidbits of hints here and there that help me out, which I, which I love. But I mean, he's, he's an intense coach, but he also, you know, has boundaries. He knows that he loves everyone in the room. You know, he's not going to take nothing personal to the guys. What is Steve Jackson kind of infusing in the group of safeties that he's now in charge of leading? Uh, knowledge of the game. I mean, we're, we're learning things that, you know, I haven't been able to learn before that, you know, he's been a player, so he's, he's able to, to say, like, you know, I've done this, so you can do it too, instead of just, you know, saying to do these things and he might not have been able to play before. So I guess, you know, just having that, <clears throat> that veteran, he's like a veteran player in the meeting room, but he's just, he's just a coach. We've heard a lot of words associated with the mentality of the defense and what that's going to be, and it's words like aggressive, violent, smart. Um, why is that so much fun to play in for you? I mean, guys play fast. We, I mean, we play this game because it, we want to, it's fun. We play this game because we, we enjoy it. We enjoy being out there, you know, with our brothers playing fast. So when you're able to go out there and just play fast, play careless, but also under control and discipline, then, you know, that's when it's fun, make plays and you're doing celebrations and, you know, doing all the fun stuff. So we're talking a lot about you as a leader and a mentor and all of this. You're also a leader at home. You're a dad. How has that impacted you as a player? My son, he comes to me, asks me for things, looks at me if this is okay or not. And I mean, it's kind of like when I'm out there on, on defense, the cornerback looks at me like, am I in the right coverage? And it's my job to you know, direct them into the, right, into the right path. So it's that same type of leadership mentality. It's a lot of responsibility for somebody who's 26 years old. Yeah, 
I mean, I had some great leaders around me, Kenny Vaccaro, Kevin Byer, Logan Ryan. I mean, these are guys that, you know, when I was young, I'm watching them be, be fathers and NFL players and watching them manage it. What's the best part of being a dad? Waking up and having the, the smile on the face of, you know, your son or your daughter, you know, coming up to you. Um, the best part that I've been having the last couple of weeks is coming home from work and then have my son and my daughter run up and smile and give me the biggest hug. Obviously, I don't like being away from them, but the fact that I'm coming home and that embrace, it's, it's amazing. When Titans All Access continues, Coach Dave McGinnis explains why rookie Tavondre Sweat is having a great start to his first NFL season. Stay tuned. The Titans selected Tavondre Sweat in the second round of the 2024 NFL Draft, and the rookie defensive lineman has impressed ever since. Titans Radio's Dave McGinnis observed Sweat in a practice recently and takes us beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. We're doing big Tavondre Sweat today, T Sweat. Ashley and I are walking over. They're going through individual right now. Big T Sweat going through the bags. Here's Tavondre with his footwork. Tracy Rocker is, is, is talking to him not only about his footwork, but, but his leverage, staying down, staying low. He's a big man, he's a huge man. He's gotten away a lot of times playing without leverage because he's just so massive and can overpower people you know, coming, coming from the collegiate game. But in this game, you need power plus leverage. Here's he moving, 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 moving. Now I tell him to burst, there you go. That's a good, and finish with a club over there on the dummy. Now he's working on being able to fight double team. That's what he's taking it to now, being able to fight double team. There you go, big sweat. See, you know, big sweat can hold a point. He holds a point there. He, he, there's not gonna be a whole lot of knockback on him. Once he learns to play with, once he learns to play with consistent leverage, they can't knock him back. And again, you hear Rock talking feet, feet, feet. You got to keep your feet moving on that because no matter how big you are, if you get if you get a combo block blocking on you, that's 700 pounds blocking on you. So you got to keep your feet moving to keep the inertia and the energy that you've generated into the into the first into the first blocker, so you can so you can ricochet off into the second guy that's coming down on you. So these guys got to fight it because that that big band gives us resistance. So here we go. This is Big T Sweat doing it. Rhett and I are going to look at this and watch this. Look at Rock, he lets it go quick because he knows Sweat will drag him across this thing like behind two mules. Shock and shed sled for all defensive players regardless of position. They're, they're, all the sleds are different for different positions. You get different height because you know, they play the game you know, from, from, from different angles. This is the shock. They're just working on the shock right now, coming out low, getting, getting their, 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 their lift in sync with their hips and their feet. Big Sweat down here. Now he went two-hand chop and arm over. That was sweet. Bull rush the first time, two hand chop, two hand chop, knock the hands down. Really, really nice rush there by, by T Sweat with another technique, not just a big man bull rush. That was that's that was excellent right then. Excellent. I've knocked the hands down, one arm rip coming off of the first time when he just did a massive bull rush. That's that's some growth. I like that. I like that a lot. Do the Titans have a miracle left in them in what has been a magical season to this point? If they do, they need it now. It's time for the decision of the week, brought to you by Hughes and Coleman. As Tennessee prepares to meet Buffalo for the 51st time, we salute the decision to found the American Football League in 1959. One of the eight men who signed up from the beginning of the AFL was Titans owner and founder, Bud Adams. Paul and I met uh, Mr. Hollis in Chicago, and he tried very hard to persuade us not to uh, start this new league, that it would be very costly. It wouldn't be good for pro football. June 8, 1966 was the day the National and American Football Leagues agreed to merge and become one. The AFL's successful competition against the NFL forced the two leagues to merge in 1966, giving us the pro football that we know and love today. Huntley looking sacked! Harold Landry! So as you watch two original AFL teams, the Titans of the Bills, play in Buffalo this weekend, be thankful that eight people decided, against all odds, to start a new football league 65 years ago. Touchdown Titans! There are no flags on the field! It's a miracle! The decision of the week is brought to you by Hughes and Coleman, official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans. 
Mike, I do love stories of our franchise, especially Bud Adams' story. I'm gonna help you out then. Oh, great. For people who are interested in Oilers Titans history, like Amy is and I am, let's share a great resource on the Titans' official website. So go to TennesseeTitans.com slash history, and it's amazing how everything that you know and love came to be over the last 65 years. It's great reading and viewing. So much for Titans fans in one place. Visit TennesseeTitans.com slash history. There's lots of pictures there. If you like pictures, you'll want to see it. Speaking of the Foolish Club, Titans fans, do we have something special for you? The Foolish Club Napa Valley, the Tennessee Titans official wine club. Now this isn't just wine, it's handcrafted Napa Valley wines honoring the iconic Tennessee Titans and the spirit of Tennessee. With each membership, you're also supporting the Tennessee Titans Foundation and giving back to our community. Now members will receive two shipments per year, three or six bottles of premium Napa Valley wine. You'll also get exclusive access to library wines, limited releases, and Titans only events. Plus, every shipment arrives in a stunning vintage fire branded wooden crate, a perfect keepsake for showing off your Titans pride. See, it's beautiful. Whether for yourself or as a gift, head over to foolishclub.com and join the Foolish Club today. Wow, that's very nice. Isn't it? Yes. One of the best moments that combines both the franchise's history and its present is the legends of the game appearance at home games at Nissan Stadium. This past weekend, ferocious pass rusher Kyle Vandenbosch came back home to Nissan Stadium. KBB back in Nashville. It was fantastic to have number 93 home. I miss you, man. No, you're thank awesome. You. Thank you, sir. I've been coming here ever since day one. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, it is. It is. It is. And then it's about to be torn down. Yeah. Whatever that new one gets. Oh, it's on the other side. I saw that. It's, it's, it's going to be nice. I don't know if they're going to do a montage when they go sag. Yeah. But he's relentless like awesome. you. Awesome. Yep, you need those. You need those bell cow guys. See KJ, did you get the same one? Nice. Looks sharp, bud. Hey, young man. Good to see you. Well, I appreciate that. That's uh, I knew what I was, I knew what I had, and I just had to give it all every snap. Awesome, big smile. Oh. Appreciate that. Yeah. Good luck, good luck. Yes, Pleasure to meet you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. There you go. You guys be loud today, okay? You heard that hometown hero song, our very own Jelly Roll, in the house. Pretty good move by the game day staff here at Nissan Stadium. Right before the Colts get ready to go back on offense, they have just shown Jelly Roll on the Jumbotron, and so everybody has gone crazy. Andre Schlett, yeah. Big personality. Big man, big personality. Big man, big personality. He, uh, yeah. He's going to lose his mind when you walk in the door. Like, the person who's going to flip out the yeah. most will be. You him. think so? Oh, my gosh. He, we had him sitting in that chair, and he goes, I would die if I could meet Jelly Roll. And we were like, well, we could. I mean, that's, you're in the same city. Oh, we crazy. could probably make that happen I'm such, I'm such a fan of his. He is going to, to flip out. I got somebody here today that might know a thing or two about singing. I'd like you guys to welcome a friend of mine here, uh, Mr. Jelly Roll. <laughs> what you say, you want to hear Save Me? Yes, sir. Come sing it with me then, big dog. <laughs> Baby, don't waste your time on me. 
I'm so damaged beyond repair. Life is shattered, my hope and my dream. There we go, give it to me. I'm a love's call. I want y'all to think about that too when y'all go on that field Sunday, that y'all's impact is bigger than just on the field. It's happening all around the city. That the vibrations of this are touching people everywhere. That your impact in the city is bigger than just the 65,000 people that come to watch y'all every single week. There are people that are counting on this organization to continue to thrive because it's feeding us. Yes, sir. Levis, delay handoff, Pollard to the 20, Pollard to the 15, Pollard to the 10, Pollard to the 5, oh, yeah, Pollard to the end zone! Yes. Touchdown Titans! On third and 19, Tony Pollard gets it all and then some. What a great call, what a great call. Hopefully we have more of those Tony Pollard touchdowns to come this weekend in Buffalo. Titans Radio airtime this Sunday is 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern. Titans Bills this Sunday on Titans Radio. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.